Hey there everyone, welcome back to Lead Coding. In this video, we will be solving the question number 3 of Lead Code Weekly Contest 223. Name of the problem is Minimize Hamming Distance After Swap Operations. Now in this problem, we are given two arrays, the source array and the target array. And we are given another array, swaps. Now each value of the array allowed swaps, it will contain two indices. So here we can see that the example contains 0 and 1. So it means that we can swap the values in the source array at the index 0 and 1. Now the next value is 2 and 3. So it means that we can swap the values at the index 2 and at the index 3 in the source array. So these are the allowed swaps. Now we have to return the minimum humming distance. That means the difference at each index of the source and the target array. So we have to minimize this difference by doing as many swaps as we can. So here we did the swap at the index 0 and 1 and this is the array that we obtained after this swap operation. Then the next swap operation is at the index 2 and 3. So doing that we obtained this array. Now if we compare this array with the target array we can see that there is only one index that is the index number 3 at which there is a difference. Other all indices are same as the target except this index. So we have to return how many such indices are there. We have to minimize those indices. Here the answer is 1. In this case the allowed swaps, there are no allowed swaps so we have to compare the source and the target array as it is. Now when we are comparing them we will find that there are differences at the index 1 and at the index 2. Yeah. So there are two indices on which there is a difference so the answer is 2. Similarly here we can see that the allowed swaps are so many and after the swap we can make the source array same as the target array. That is why the output is 0. Now let us start solving this problem. So I think let me take this example the last one alright the source array the target and the swaps so we can swap the index 0 and the index 4 then we can swap the index 4 and the index 2 then index 1 and 3 then 1 and 4 so these are the swaps that we can do now if an element is there at the index 0 it can go to any index that is 4, 2, 1 or 3. How? So from 0 it can go to index 4, from index 4 it can go to index 2 after doing a swap. Also from index 4 it can go to index 1 and from index 1 it can go to the index 3 after the swap. So from index 0 we can go to any of these indices that is 4, 2, 1 and 3. Similarly from 4 we can go to index 0 doing a swap, from 4 we can go to index 2 doing a swap we can go to index 1 and then we can go to index 3 as well from 4. So to go to 3 from 4 we will first go to 1 then we will go from 1 to 3. Alright. Similarly from 2 we can go to all of these indices. So we can swap between all of these indices which are connected. How? So this is our source array, this is our target array. Now 5 which is at index 0. Let me first mark the indices 2, 3 and 4. Yeah, so from 4 we can go to any index. So 5 will go to 1 and 1 will have to come to the index 0. So we will obtain 1, 5, 2, 4 and 3. Now from the remaining we want 4 to come at the index uh, 2 and we can actually swap 2 and 4 so that is why 4 will come here and 2 will have to come here after the swap. Now this is the, the same array as the target array and that is why we got the answer as 0 in this case. Now what I want to depict by taking this example is uh, whichever indices are connected using this swap array we can actually uh, transfer value from any index to any other index. For example let me take this. So let us say the index 1, 2 and 3 are connected and I'm taking a 6 uh, size array then the index 4 and 5 and 0 are connected 
we can transfer the value which is at the index 1 to uh, any of these indices 2 or 3 and we can transfer whatever value is there at the index 2 to the index 1 or to the index 3 similarly we can transfer the value at the index 4 to the index 5 or to the index 0 and from 5 to the index 4 to the index 0 and from 0 to 5 and 4 so we just have to see that what all indices are connected using this swap array and then we can rotate the values in those indices now how to actually find these groups for that we can use a very useful data structure called DSU disjoint set union so I'm not going to teach DSU in this lecture because I have already covered it in the past there's a dedicated video the link will be provided in the description so you can go to that learn that data structure and then I have also solved few example problems from this data structure in that video itself now when you're comfortable with this data structure you can easily solve this problem so we just have to form these groups we just have to find these unions and after that we will see that inside these unions what all are the differences so let's say I think there is no example uh, yeah let me take some example and explain what we have to do once we are done finding these unions let us say this is our first union now this these three values are the first union and these two are in the second union okay these are in the first union these are in the second union I'm talking about the indices now let us denote the head of this union as the index 0 and let us denote the head of this union as the index uh, 3 okay now in the union 1 we can rotate all these values so 1 can come to the position where 5 is there and 5 can come to the position where 1 is there so we can obtain something like this 1 5 and 2 okay so in the target union the values are 1 5 and 4 now there's a difference at this position so in this example the difference is at one position okay in this union the difference is at one position only now talking about the second union which is denoted by 3 it is uh, 4 and 3 and the target is 2 and 3 now we can take 3 to this position and 4 to this position because we saw that we can rotate inside the union we can transfer any value from any place to other place so we can obtain 3 and 4 now the difference is at this index so there's only one difference in this union as well so in total there are two differences so that is what we can do so now let us see the code for the same I will just go through the code walkthrough so here is the uh, union and the find these two you will get to know in the lecture which I have provided in the description if you don't know about it already now the other things I'm going to code this out so first of all uh, I am initializing this parent and the size array of union find then I'm creating a map so basically this map is of type int comma map of int again so basically what I want is my map of index this should denote the name of the union for example here we were denoting the first union by 0 and the second union by 3 so these are the head of the unions so this first integer will denote that union that which union is this so once we know the union then we have another value that we have to count the number of elements inside that union so we will count the occurrence of one so actually we are just bothered about what all elements are there inside the union in the source and the target so the union which is marked by zero we will count the occurrence of all the elements so for that uh, m of 0 and 5 will be 1 m of 0 and 1 will be 1 we are just counting and m of 2 sorry 0 and 2 will also be 1 so we are storing the count of source and then we will go to the target for the same union so we will see in the target that m of 0 comma 1 
so we will just reduce it we were incrementing it in the source and now we will be reducing it in the target so we will do minus 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 so after minus minus this will become zero okay then we will go to the next one that is m of zero comma five now the value for this is also one so we will do minus minus because we are on the target so we will also reduce here so this will also become zero now for m of four m of zero comma four we will do minus minus for this as well so this will be minus one because there is no m of zero comma four so m of zero comma four will be minus one okay so now in total in the union zero inside the map we will have two values one value is minus one the second value is one it means that there's only one difference we will just sum up these values whatever is there inside the union denoted by zero we will sum up those values we will sum up the absolute of those values so here the absolute will be minus one absolute of minus one plus one that is equal to one plus one is equal to two so this is the total difference inside this map inside this union denoted by zero so we can divide it by two and we can obtain the number of differences the other thing that we can do is we can keep two maps so we can actually keep two maps the first map will denote the count of the source the second map will denote the count of the uh, target for the same union that is denoted by zero and then we can take the differences but here we are taking the differences at the same time we are just reducing we are just incrementing it at the time of the source and decrementing it at the time of the target and sometimes it might be possible that there is some negative value so for that we will have to take the absolute and then divide it by two i hope you understand it it will be more clear if we take the if we look at the code so now you got what this map is for then yes then we will initialize an answer with zero now we will go to each of the swap and union them together so this will form the unions then we will go to each of the index one by one for the source and we will increment it as i told you we will increment for now the find i will denote the head of the union find i will give the head of the union so for head of the union we are incrementing this value for the source and then for the target we are decrementing this value now we will go to each of the union so we are going each, we are going to each of the union and we are obtaining the second map so b is the second map now we are going to each of the values inside the second map and we are taking the absolute as i told you and adding it to the answer and then finally returning answer by 2 so this code is accepted now uh, talking about the space and the time complexity so we are using big o of n extra space here we can see that we are using big o of n extra space uh, inside the map also so in the worst case let us say that there these uh, swap array size is 0 so in that case there will be total number of n unions so each of the index will be in different unions so there will be total n unions so for that the map will be of size n the first map will be of size n and for each map inside this map will be of size 1 so in that case this will be big O of n so the space complexity that we are using is big O of n now I want you guys to tell me the time complexity of this solution in the comments so for hint you can see that we are using this swap array and for each of the swap we are calling union alright so if you want more such videos in the future do subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon so that you can get notifications to the latest videos thank you